Okay, today we are going on to chapter 19, Plane Geometry, and we are going to start with the first section on Triangle Theorems. Before we start on Triangle Theorems, we are going to do revision, okay, of our Emacs properties that we are going to use in this particular section. In fact, all the things that we have learned in Emacs are all applicable to this particular section on proving, okay? First, we must know what is vertically opposite angles, adjacent angles on straight line, angles at a point, corresponding angles parallel lines, alternate angles parallel lines, interior angles parallel lines. Okay, then we must know what is an angle bisector. An angle bisector will divide the angle into two equal parts. Perpendicular bisector will divide a line segment into two equal parts and the perpendicular bisector is actually 90 degrees to the line segment. Isosceles triangle, two equal sides with two base angles equal. Equilateral triangle with three equal sides and three angles all equal to 60 degrees. So all these are the things that we have to know from our Emacs and we are going to transfer it to our Emacs. Okay, now let's look at activity 19A that is found on page 163. Okay, I'm going to teach you how to write a mathematical proof or mathematical theorem. Alright, now the question says this, if you refer to page 163, the diagram shows the two parallel lines AB and CD. P is a point on AB and Q and R are points on CD and PQ is an angle bisector of the angle APR. Now, if PQ is an angle bisector of AP, APR, that means this angle here must be equal to this angle, divide into two equal halves. So I let each of them be theta. Okay? The question say to prove that triangle PQR is isosceles. Okay, let's write the proof now. Angle APQ is equals to angle PQR. These are alternate angles parallel lines. And these two angles are equal because they tell you in the question that PQ is an angle bisector. Okay? So it shows that angle PQR is equal to angle QPR. These two angles are equal because of these two. And because we have two angles equal, okay, triangle PQR is isosceles as two angles are equal. So this is a very simple illustration of how we do geometrical proving in a particular situation. Okay, now we are moving on to revise some of the things that we have done in Emacs again. Okay, now we know that in order to prove congruent triangles, we have four properties. SSS, SAS, AAS and RHS. And to prove similar triangles, we have three properties here. SSS similarity, SAS similarity, and AA similarity. Okay, now note, isosceles triangle and congruent triangles can be used to prove that two lengths are equal. Okay, I will illustrate in future examples that we can use isosceles triangle and congruent triangles to prove that two lengths are equal. Now, for similar triangles, when they give us in terms of ratio, usually we'll use the property of similar triangles. I will illustrate it in future examples too. Okay, let's move on to example one. Okay, example one. Now, example one says, in the diagram, AED, AED, and BDC are straight lines. AB is equals to AC and BE is equals to CE. Prove that angle BEA, BEA is equals to angle ECEA. Now we're supposed to prove this. Now first of all, we prove that AB is equals to AC is given, BE is equals to CE is given, and AE is a common side. We prove that these two triangles are congruent because of the three sides SSS, 
Therefore, we can conclude that angle BEA is equal to angle CEA. So, in this particular part, we use congruent triangles to prove that two angles are the same. Okay? Now, next part. We are supposed to prove that triangles BDE and triangle CDE are congruent. We are supposed to prove this. So, let's take a look. Angle BED is here. B, E, D is this one, the blue one. It's 180 minus theta. Adjacent angles on straight line. Angle C, E, D is also the blue one here. It's also 180 minus theta. Adjacent angles on straight line. Angle B, E, D will therefore be equal to angle C, E, D. And E, D is a common side. So we have triangle B, D, E congruent to triangle C, D, E because of S, A, S. SAS because it's an included angle. So we prove these congruent triangles by using SAS property. Okay, next, we must prove that D is the midpoint of BC. Now, this is rather simple. Now, we know that triangle BDE is congruent to triangle CDE. Therefore, BD must be equal to CD. Now, if BD is equal to CD, it shows that D is the midpoint it will cut into two equal halves and therefore they are equal. So this is how we prove all the parts there in example one. Okay, now next, we are going on to example two. Okay, let's take a look at example two. Now for example two, all right, you can see that the questions ask us in terms of fractions and ratios and most likely when we see such cases we are going to use similar triangles okay first part all right prove that ae over ab is equals to ad over ac now we know that dae and cab they are vertically opposite angles therefore they are equal angle dea is equal to angle CBA, alternate angles, parallel lines. So these two are similar because of AA similarity. Okay, so if they are similar, when I take the ratio AE over AB, it must be equal to AD over AC. According to the similar triangles property, the sides are proportional. Okay, next, part two. Prove that AE over EB is equal to AD over DC. Now, let us take a look. This is already proven in part 1. Okay, this is already proven in part 1. Okay, so we let this fraction be K or let this factor be K. So, if I have this, AE will be KAB and AD will be KAC. I'll just bring it for forward. Okay, now let's take a look. AE over EB is actually AE over now. EB is AE plus AB. Okay, now I'm going to replace AE by KAB. I factorize out AB. I cancel off AB. Okay, I cancel off AB. I will get this ratio K over K plus 1. Now, likewise, we do for AD over DC. We replace. We cancel off AC. We take out the common factor. We also get K over k plus 1. Now, if both of these are equal to k over k plus 1, therefore, the two ratio or the two fractions must be the same. Okay, so this is how we prove example 2 in section 19.1. Now, next, I'm going to introduce to you a theorem which is called the midpoint theorem. Now, what is the midpoint theorem? In triangle ABC, if D and E are midpoints of side A, B and A, C respectively, then D, E is parallel to B, C and D, E is half the length of B, C. That means if this is the midpoint, this is the midpoint and we join them, these two will be parallel and this will be half the length of this. Or we can also say that this is twice the length of this. Now the proof of this theorem is found on page 167. Now, this midpoint theorem is very useful when we prove certain things in this particular chapter. Okay, now, let us look at example 3 of this particular section. Example 3. Okay, now, example 3 says, 
that we are supposed, let us read the question first. Huh? In the diagram, ABCD is a, is a trapezium with AD parallel to BC. Okay, EFG are the midpoints of lines AB, BD, and CD respectively. The straight lines EG and BD, EC, sorry, the straight line EG and BD intersect at point F. Prove that EG is parallel to AD and EG is half of AD plus BC. Okay, now we know that E is the midpoint of AB, F is the midpoint of BD. So by midpoint theorem, EF must be parallel to AD. Note that EFG is a straight line since EG and BD intersect at F, straight line, straight line. So EFG must be a straight line. Therefore, we have EG parallel to AD. So once EFD, EFG is a straight line, EG will be parallel to AD because EF is already parallel to AD. Okay? Now, next part. We are supposed to prove that EG is equal to half of this plus this. Now, my midpoint theorem, EF is half of AD and FG is half of BC. Now, we know that EG is EF plus FG. We substitute in. We factorize out half. Factorize out half. So, we will get the final answer as required. Okay? So, this will be the answer to our example 3. Okay? Next, we move on to example 4. Alright, let's look at example 4. What did the question say? For example 4, the question says that we are supposed to prove PS is parallel to QR and also PS is equal to QR and note that PQRS are the midpoints of the sides. Okay, now in triangle ABD, that means this triangle ABD, by midpoint theorem, PS will be parallel to BD and PS is half BD. In this other triangle, by midpoint theorem, QR is parallel to BD and QR is also equal to half BD. Now, since PS is parallel to BD and QR is parallel to BD, it will imply that PS is parallel to QR. Okay? BD is here, parallel, so these two will be parallel as well. And PS is half BD, QR is also half BD, so it implies that PS is equal to QR. So we have already proven example 4. Now class, do not be too worried if you cannot prove the, the questions. Because this is quite a tough chapter and it needs a lot of practice and a lot of concepts in order to do the questions. Okay? So this is the questions that we have for our content base on section 19.1. Now, I'm going to give you the homework that we are going to do for exercise 19.1 on the full scap. So, on the full scap, okay, for exercise 19.1, we are going to do question 2, question Four, question 6, 8, and 11. Okay, so can you please do all these questions 2, 4, 6, 8, and 11 on the full scap paper before you refer to the solution video in the next section. Okay, alright, thank you class.